Have you ever had some less than pure emotions when you're coaching teams or maybe just one individual? You know those situations or someone that just gets on your nerves? Well, welcome to the world of being just human. It's totally normal and you didn't just become suddenly super zen just because now you're an agile coach. In this particular coaching story, like in many others, what I do is that I share some pieces of a story that actually happened to me and the learnings that I took from it. And in this one in particular, we'll be threading the lines of humanity and ethics. There is a team and there is a nasty colleague who sucks life out of the room. Curious much? Let's get started. So in this story, I was coaching a team where there was one person who was not only a senior contributor to the team in a number of years, that person has been in the organization and in that team for quite some time, but also that person had a lot of knowledge. It's a, it's a senior technical person who is involved in major decisions, be in the code, in the architecture, even sometimes some functional aspects, somebody who understands the business domain. So it's a very valuable asset to the team. Then I started noticing that this person was rather disruptive from their choice of words to their behaviors toward people, interrupting others, speaking more than everybody in the room, uh, being aggressively assertive. This person was really interesting. And at first I thought it was an impression. And over time I came to realize by being in several situations and also having folks that I was coaching asking me for help, I, I then detected that this person was a particular disruption for the team. My personal dilemma is that even though I might not succeed all the time, they do strive to be good and kind in this world. And I want this to reflect into my coaching and it's part of my values really. And there was also a little bit of saving face in there as well, because sometimes you want to be kind, but you also want to be perceived as kind. In my case, I definitely wanted to, and I was really struggling to find a way on how to help that person change their behavior. Mostly, the pieces I'm talking about here have to do with politeness and really being attuned to others in a collective settings. And, and this person didn't display many of those qualities. And I'm very aware that those could be cultural differences, but it's a very diverse group. I mean, people from different countries, men, women, and they all seem to be uncomfortable with the ways of this particular colleague. And to make matters worse, this situation happened way before I arrived in the team. So it's something that just kept growing. The story ends relatively well and I did eventually find my place to be a little bit more assertive or maybe a lot more assertive with this particular individual. And I won't detail some of the interactions for matters of confidentiality, but I was definitely making sure that other people could speak. I was definitely making sure that that person was not interrupting me or anyone else. And this big struggle that was going on with me taught me a couple of things, maybe maybe three or four things that I want to share with you. The first is, I guess, I was stuck in a piece that is related to my values. So I was confusing being nice with being kind. So my value is being kind. And you can be the assertive type of kind person. So in fact, um, when you are motivated by kindness, I think now that you truly can use the proper words, the words that are required in the moment to stop in aggression or in politeness or to just restore the order in the room. And being nice is just saving face. Being nice is just giving your power to someone else with nothing really in return. And the second piece of this, you know, being kind versus nice is that suppose, and I was really empathizing with the history of this person because they, they had quite the struggle to carry the quality of the team up to this point in a team where there's always people coming in and out. And this person was long standing citizen of the team. But in my empathy towards this person, I was lacking the empathy and like lacking the kindness towards the whole collective of the team. What do I mean by that? I didn't want to say or act in certain ways, which I knew could prompt 
a strong reaction from this particular person because it, it tended to be a, a more sensitive person. So I didn't want to offend. I didn't want to, to push any buttons, but so I was unwilling to be unkind if that was unkind to this one person while I was actually being unkind to everybody else in the room who had to endure the lack of politeness, who had to endure someone who basically sometimes doesn't show a lot of respect for their peers. So it was a really interesting to see how sometimes you can over-empathize and lose the helicopter view, the big picture that is required. So while I was trying to give this person a chance, all the chances that I really could, we have to be realistic here. I am the coach of the whole team and this is not a one-on-one -on -one session. Those are group facilitated sessions and mathematically speaking, there is more people losing than one person losing and you know what happens when you reward behaviors that are not the type of behaviors that are conducive to great teamwork. And that was just one of those. So I also like to remember that this is in fact something that relates to ethics. So there are a few ethical clauses in here from the Agile Coaching Code of Ethics that we can call out. The first one being upholding social inclusion and diversity. There is more than 10 voices in the room who cannot be properly listened to because of one single voice. So you already get to see the ethical piece in place. And the second one, it's about managing difference in status and power. And that is very important because this person actually is not only a senior member of the organization, but not only in time, long standing, but also in the hierarchy. This person had, as far as their role, they were considered above the others. So maybe even a little bit of a, a power struggle going on in there and people, you know, not only the person is impolite, but the person is above me. You know what? I'll just stand quiet. I won't say anything. So I couldn't really, as an agile coach, stand behind that attitude. And another thing that I didn't really learn, I already know, but I was able to solidify was to get a stronger use of my facilitator hat. It is quite the skill to become a very useful facilitator and, you know, remove the noise in the room so that the, the group can really collaborate. And if you have 12 people, the 12 people have equal rights for the most part, or that's, that's how I believe. And in some shape or form, my favorite skill is coaching and somehow the coaching was getting in the way and I do know that more skilled coaches than I am can coach the room out of that situation but for me it wasn't possible so understanding that I have other superpowers that I can borrow from in the agile coaching framework and all the stances that we get to use was a really helpful reminder and it was actually what helped us in this case here. So how did I get there? I didn't get there alone. I didn't solve that alone. I obviously went after some coaching for myself. And that is something that I can't recommend enough. If you were an agile coach, you should be getting regular coaching and coach supervision. It's the only way for you to really grow your skills to the max, you really need to have other people to help you get there. It's not the sort of thing that you get alone with self-reflection, trust me. Although maybe given 20 years, you could, but you do shortcut your time to get there when you look for help in another coach. To conclude, I wanna share some five tips with you on how you can attack such a similar situation. And I'll definitely use my own experience in here for that one. Tip number one is that silence is better than being rude or answering too fast or overreacting. So especially if it's the first time that something like that happens, someone is being rude, you're just not going to be rude back and um, assess your own ability to respond and respond means that you can pause, be present with the moment. And maybe that one time slide, you never know what the conditions are. Maybe you talk to the person after the event, that sort of thing. Tip number two is use your coaching hat and see if you have some genuine powerful questions that in that particular situation you think that could help the other person to reposition themselves in a more well-mannered attitude. Tip number three is it's okay to be assertive. It's okay to state the facts, to state your position. Being direct is being kind. 
Tip number four is that whether this is a workshop, a meeting, a training, you do get to remove the disruptive person from the room. Remember, you're not going to favor one over 11. You are in a collective setting. You respect the well-being of the collective. We always hope it doesn't come to that. But if it does, you know what to do. And then you excuse yourself with the whole group. You pause and you do whatever you need to make them whole. Pick up what you left and, you know, continue with the rest of the group to do what needs to be done. And if you're having a hard time with any of these things, do what I did go for coaching. It doesn't matter what it is about. Is this about fear? Is this about of a people pleasing tendency? Is this about of a lack of confidence? It doesn't really matter. Don't, don't judge yourself in that. If you detect that you are struggling in showing up as the coach who is helpful, useful, who can really help the group to achieve better things, then there is absolutely no shame in looking for help yourself. So that was the story I wanted to share with you, my friend. I do find that as Agile coaches, we do get a ton of personal growth and self-awareness together with our career and professional growth. And who wouldn't want that? Ah, so good. You get to help others and in the process, you end up helping yourself. I hope this video was informative for you. I hope it was useful. Let me know in the comments, did you ever use the help of another fellow coach, either, you know, a professional coach that you were paying for, or even a peer coach, a colleague to get out of a difficult situation where you couldn't really see past the surface? I'd love to know. I really, really enjoy getting as much coaching as I do enjoy coaching others. So share your story. In any case, thank you so much for watching and I catch you on the next video. Bye for now.